we're going to showcase a book, a book of poems called I Am the Darkness, A Journey Through Unspoken Thoughts by Texas author and poet E.R. Inahosa III. We're going to meet E.R. Inahosa right after I say the video and audio that is 12 Steps by Dennis Lowry just hit youtube.com it's getting so much attention and views that we need to sneak that into this episode let's just jump right into where we left off as you see fit regarding your book i am the darkness a journey through unspoken thoughts awesome thank you hondo so just like you said hondo we're starting right where we left off last time i was on your show we were, we were able to get through the first couple of poems the first three and so we'll just pick up on the next one over which is my creator and that would be on page 25 for you hondo and for quattro toro uh, that may have the book in hand um a brief just a real brief synopsis of this poem of course uh you know, I wrote it at a time where I was, you know, in a dark place. And so when you're there in the trenches of one's life, you know, you look up in the dark and all you can see is stars. I mean, it's dark. You got nothing. You're out by yourself. And at some point, everybody's going to reach out to their creator or to the universe or to whatever they believe. And so this is simply a poem of me having a monologue a one-sided a very one-sided conversation uh with you know obviously my creator so that's just kind of where this is coming from all right i came not to ask any questions but only to reply i care not to understand secrets but only to live and die lord i open up to you freely with the cry of desperation my pain shines forth like never before without any hesitation I give myself to you, Lord, time after time I've tried, and time after time that I'm healing is only time after time that I've cried. And it seems you've given me gifts, Lord, to understand what comes to be. And I use them as well as I can, Lord, but often they do not hear me. It seems that no one is listening, and it seems that their faith is gone. I always try to see through it, but end up converting no one. And why did you pick me, Lord? Tell me, how do I know? Well, I come not seeking any answers, but would appreciate them, though. Am I blasphemous and sinning with some evil-minded plan? Am I losing or am I winning, trading halos with the damned? So in what tongues do I tell them? And then what would I say? I'm sorry I'm asking these questions. I suppose that I'll learn them someday. I feel so incredibly special and would like to begin my task. Will I know when I am ready or will I have to ask? Why all of the ups and downs, Lord? Well, I thank you nevertheless. Let's finish this another night, Lord, when more secrets will be expressed. The end. We got feedback from the dojo. Dennis Lowry expressing his sentiments. Very nice, sir. Showing appreciation for that poem you just read my creator absolutely and that means so much coming from dennis i've had uh the opportunity and pleasure to watch him on your show and of course hear some of his music and uh i mean as an incredibly musician and songwriter and artist uh he would know you know he would know quality he would know uh the painstaking time that it takes to come up with four lines even Uh, And so any compliment from from a guy like that, I really appreciate it, Dennis. That's awesome. And we'll tie together some sentiments that you just said with some sentiments from Quattro Toro in the Outlaw Dojo. You noted that Dennis Lowry is a musician, a songwriter. You, Rochambeau, are an author, a poet. Quattro Mm -hmm. Toro is noting, she's stating, I think what is great about poetry like music lyrics you can reflect on how the words relate in your world although the author slash artist may have a complete different take 
Exactly, 100%. And, and whatever the artist was writing about or for it is, is very specific and duly noted, right? But as a listener or, you know, as a, a patron of the arts, it can be interpreted in their life, in, in one's life, in many different ways, which makes, like Contra Toro was saying, makes it even magical because you know what was meant to be one thing ends up being a million different things and that's you know couldn't and it's individualized it's personalized and so someone who is coming out of a dark spot could read that and take from that certain things that maybe someone going into a dark spot may take different things right um and and so essentially these poems on my end are just you know like a heads up for people to know that a we all go through dark times b this is what it looked like from my end on a you know micro scale and and then ultimately because i've gone through it you're ultimately not alone right you're, you're not reinventing the wheel you're not by yourself and i think from that point of view um as an artist at least for me, from that point of view, it, I was able to flow. I found my wave and I kind of just wrote that, uh, you know, was able to write from that space. Like, okay, I'm helping other people realize that they're not by themselves on this journey, you know. Rochambeau, consistent with the art that we showcase in the Outlaw Dojo, the description of this episode, 2416, has more information about you and information as to where one can go find and purchase your book. So we'll probably Wonderful. get more formal into that. But per usual, the description of this episode, in your case, in this book's case, has a link to the Amazon.com store where one can purchase their book. Similar to if, if we showcase a song, we have a link to the YouTube channel where one can go get more familiar with that art. So, And I really appreciate that. I think... Uh, the beauty of your channel lends to, I mean, well, I love the outlaw concept. Obviously, the outlaw country is the underlining and then country underlining, you know, base. Uh, but under outlaw, you know, I love that because it could, it could handle music. It could be poems. It could be art. It could be, you know, it's a state of mind. It's a state of understanding what, outlaw means and of course doesn't literally mean that we break the law every 10 seconds but it sure means that we think for ourselves as independent thinkers and it's a cool space that you've provided independent thinkers outlaws to come by in the space and to talk to each other and, and agree or disagree if outlaw artwork you know poems and songs uh meet the metal, you know, make that metal. And so I, I like that a lot. Rochambeau, thanks for reinforcing and appreciating what the Outlaw Dojo concept is. Dennis is noting, I think why we all enjoy art so much and why it's so important is because it reminds us all of thoughts we've all had at one point. And that's why some take it one way and some take it another way. That's probably why God gave us short-term memory, because it makes us appreciate art that reminds us of how we feel. Roger that, Dennis. Thank you for that. We look forward to getting another artist's sentiments on your sentiments. Absolutely. I mean, he nails it. Uh, exactly what, what I was trying to say earlier, he nails it. We, we do enjoy the art because it's something we all go through, you know, from our own perspective. And when somebody can say a verse or play a tune that resonates with us, you know, from across the country or across the globe, uh, I think that just human nature, you know, it feels good to feel understood or have somebody say uh, an emotion that you were trying to say that you really couldn't get out. Uh, and so in that sense, it feels good to be understood, but it shows that we're all connected, you know, that, that we're all feeling the same emotions just in different ways. And there's only so many 
to pick from when you write about. And so I think to, for better or worse, I kind of picked writing a lot about the negative emotions, the sad, the, the mad, the, you know, the crime. Turns out, evidently, many people have been sad and mad over time and can relate. And so that, that's a very good thing that they can relate and feel like they're not alone. On the other side, there's many happy songs that I'm very happy that people relate to as well. And so by no means do I think, you know, my lyrics per se are the end all be all uh, as far as art goes, because there is a, a twist, a, a twang to them that's a bit, you know, macabre or somber. Uh, and that's just for the people who are there now that can maybe kind of lift themselves out of it. But for certain, if you're someone that, that reads poems or hears a song and you don't vibe with it, let's say, right? You're like, oh, that was a sad song and I'm in a great mood. I, I, I don't vibe with that. You know, that's OK, because that, too, shows us, you know, the trajectory we're on or what we're doing, how we're feeling. And so I think that art and always, especially lyrics, well, you know, paintings, too, um, can can rub anybody a certain way and it's right what they needed at that time, you know, whatever they're feeling at that time. Rochambeau and Outlaw Dojo, as if on cue, we're now joined by Brazil. In a nutshell, shout out to Brazil. Hey, Brazil. More detailed shout out to Brazil here in a bit, but... If we recall a few episodes ago, Brazil noted some Brazilian music, some Brazilian genre of music that had a right. sad, lonesome feel. So I'm going to jump right, right in and send it back to you, Rochambeau. But of all humans, we just got joined by Brazil, who noted this sad, lonesome genre of That's Brazilian right. music. When it comes to songs, we have Dennis Lowry here. We can all, we, we all just know that there are songs that are sad songs, right? Painful songs. Okay, we are an outlaw dojo. I am a DJ for an outlaw classic country radio station. So sad, painful songs is just certainly something I'm privy to, but who wouldn't be, no matter what so type true. of music you're in. Okay, but Rochambeau, right. let's tie it back to you. You said macabre and sad and or dark. Putting right. you on the spot. But let's just say some people saw the trailer to this episode and are going to watch the the mini version of this episode. Out of the gate, the title, I Am the Darkness, is just going to stand out or resonate. Not that you have to justify it, of course, whatsoever. But do you mind digging into you and this book of yours, I Am the Darkness, reinforcing, describing how, why, and when is it called I Am the Darkness? You were touching on it, but would you mind going deeper to illuminate where the sad darkness element is and shed some more light on that, please? Absolutely, Hondo. I appreciate that. So going back to absolutely hi to Brazil. Welcome back to the chat. And we noticed you were gone and you're back. And that's what counts. So great to see you. Uh, right. So Brazil was able to lend their uh their knowledge about sofrencia right which they just put in the chat there for us to to be able to see and so what i and i was able to go and listen to some songs and of course this is a genre of love and suffering as far as i understand and of course brazil please feel free to correct me and or add to this sweet genre that you yourself put us on to uh, and so in that genre of music, I think that Brazil was right on and pointing it out to us because for multiple reasons, the, you know, rhythm and melodies could be like uh, a like to outlaw country, right? I mean, again, you were talking about in outlaw country, there's many a sad song, many a blue eyes in the rain kind of modes and tones. I think that uh, with that, the Brazilian Sofrencia, I think that very similar in nature with the, with the, and there was a language barrier for me, I'm going to, you know, be completely honest, but 
uh, I listen to several artists because again, it's a genre. So several artists, male, female, great beats, great drums and melodies. So I think everyone should check it out. And in and, and that, so cross culturally, I think that that darkness uh, is felt that pain of life of losing, of wanting, of, of you know failing, uh, is just obviously worldwide. I mean, it's a human element to feeling those feelings, and so as a youngster, I just enjoyed writing and would would take time out of my day to to write things down and of course it built up as exercises writing exercises and so you know rhyming came along and then poetry and, and songwriting came along and through all that i always kind of just stayed with the, the the darkness angle and and when i say angle i just mean my personal uh, feelings at the time, my journey. Um, but it was never in my mind, nefarious, right? It was never anything, uh, to do with, um, like anti God or anti universe or anti people. My darkness was just my darkness. And it just was a personal journey. And I always knew that I'd come out of it and somehow had the wherewithal to, know that when I was out of it, I would never go back, but then I would never really be able to describe what it felt like. So I took time to write it down what it felt like, knowing that one day I would not return to those feelings. And so it's interesting for me to read poems or hear music that is sad or is that tone from now that I'm out of it, from a point of view looking in, you know, outside looking in. Uh, but I am glad that I wrote it down for those who are still in that, that frame of mind. Um, and I think a lot of artists do that. They, they take advantage of being in an emotion that, you know, might be more rare, right? A rare emotion like true happiness or true sadness or, or you know, total bewilderment or, you know, uh, anything like that, where it's just so extreme that if the artist has the talent and the time to, to document that, uh, I just think that worldwide, everybody kind of, you know, recognizes their pain. And I think for the artist that that, that's enough, you know, I mean, obviously, Obviously, getting out of the pain is the goal, but being recognized for being in it uh, is is the goal to some extent. And so, um, and there's a huge market for it, you know, uh, for people who who are looking for those kind of poems and songs. So, you know, it, the journey continues. Clearly, there's a huge shoot. Sorry, Rochambeau. Clearly, there is a huge market. My mind is just like like you and I say. You are helping me widen my gaze. With sure. a wide gaze, now I see there is a market for poetry of all types. There certainly sure. is a market for sad, dark country songs. I can vouch yeah. for that. And why 100%. wouldn't there be a market for any other form of art that's touching on the same genre, reinforced by you, reinforced by Brazil? Mm -hmm. Rochambeau, a.k.a. E.R. Inahosa. how about we <laughs> use that as a springboard to have you recite your next poem. I'll follow along and simultaneously do a outlaw country shout out. Is that sound okay. agreeable? And when Sounds I, great. when I just step away, I might go on mute, but we look forward to you walking us through what you're going to do and then reading that particular poem. Okay, great. Yeah, it sounds great. So the next poem we have is uh, one called my ocean. And you know, it, for me, you know, emotions uh, go deep. They run deep, right? For, for most people, they run, they run pretty deep. For me, they always have. And so, you know, the analogy here is my ocean is my emotions, you know. And so, uh, you know, when you kind of follow that line of thinking, then it becomes a little bit easier to follow the analogy of the poem. So just kind of setting it up with that. The farther I wander 
the further I creep onto that water, into the deep, the more it produces, the more I can keep out of the dream that's inside this sleep. I'm addicted to swimming inside the dream, thus pouring an ocean on top of my stream. Under the moon with its many a beam, my ocean is black with the shimmering gleam. The fountain of knowledge feeds my ocean of time where the origin of whispers is right in front of mine eyes, enthralled by emotions from both heart and from mind, where the warmth never fades, but the sun never shines. My heart has no room for the sun and its glory. I am the warmth here, the author of stories. So just set in one's ego while in pain, stuck in your emotions, of course you're gonna say something like, I am the warmth here. I don't need the sun. I am the darkness uh, and things like that. And so this is at the beginning of the book. And it's kind of that where you enter, you know, the first the first one we read was my creator kind of talking to God, thinking about the universe. And then the next motion is to walk straight into the ocean of your emotions. And then that's kind of the, the descent into the darkness. And then at the end of the book, you kind of come out of it. Right. So. It's just uh, a journey, but through poetry, right? Through modern poetry. Oh, I know this. You have the subtitle called The Journey. A That's Journey it. Through Unspoken that Thoughts. Correct. The farther yeah, I exactly. wander, the further I creep onto the water, into the deep. First few poems in your book, mm -hmm. I Am the Darkness, A Journey Through Unspoken Thoughts by you, E.R. Inahosa III. By me, can you believe it? <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. I believe it for a lot of reasons. A few episodes, a few episodes ago, the both of us were together, and you showcased by reading poems one, two, and three from this book, "I Am the Darkness." Mm -hmm. Now you're reading poems four, five, and six of yeah, your book absolutely. i'm the darkness so in the sense we're picking up where we left off we'll look for any dojo feedback the call sign's coming up so i am going to officially mute here but rochambeau i'll turn it back over to you with that snapshot we look forward to another poem for you to showcase but please as you see fit share your next sentiments thank you thank you so one uh i guess cool aspect of the book is um at, even before any of the poems uh i wrote a, a pretty heavy preface you know preface usually is like a page long talking about or a few pages maybe that's talking about what the book is going to be about or maybe what the author is through. in this pre preface i decided to try to explain the you know, the difficult process uh, of going through pain, of going through darkness. And so I tried to make a concept, a conceptual, you know, visual in someone's mind of what potential darkness could look like for those who don't know or those who can't explain it. And so it's not a poem, but in addition to the poems, the preface really does explain a lot of to my mind and what the poems are about um within the book and so so there is somewhat of an explanation and at least a preface to the poems before you get to the doom and gloom as it were so we just read my ocean again just going into the depths of the ocean which are emotions there is the analogy the next poem in the book that we'll be reading today is Destiny's Rose. Inspiration from this poem came from, you know, dreams and ideas and movies and things like that. I really hadn't uh, experienced any anything that's in this poem. It's more just a completely conceptual and art. Now on to Destiny's Rose. And what now may I wonder? I've confronted fate face to face. Now I gaze at horizons as under, underneath the hurt my heart ought to have replaced. On none more of a solemn evening, 
since my heart has seen the depths and once more began its grieving. Me, miserable, under a starless sky I wept. Through, though with the loveliest pose my destiny arose, Osme still further tomorrow. With the cold and impassionate touch, I laid twelve in a bunch, in much darkness and with such sorrow. How exquisite is love and continues to be, though I have failed, have not had enough. That I should remain within love's company in the presence of a rose I can no longer touch. And in addition to losing my love, she will never know, for in the shadows I will remain here alone. Destiny's so, Rose. Please continue, yeah, Rochambeau. Tale, absolutely. Little tale about lost love or, you know, just a general overtone of, you know, maybe how, how like I say, how exquisite is love, you know? Even if you've loved and lost, you can still, you got to admit that love is still pretty good, no matter if you're heartbroken or happy or whatever. I think love is the ultimate goal. And so here in this poem was just kind of juxtaposing having the greatest thing in the world, right? And then losing it and what that might feel like, right? And so you're going to hear words like me, miserable, under a starless sky wept, right? Under meaning, meaning it was cloudy skies, there was no stars, it was starless. So rainy days. And, and of course, that's kind of the idea about this poem. And... I wouldn't necessarily call it romantic by any means, but there is a certain sense of longing when you lose something that I think everyone can understand, whether it's love or a um, you know, pet or you, know, you moved and you miss your old house or friends. Um, I think we can all. And so I love what, what everybody in the chat's thinking, what Contra Toro mentioned, what Dennis Lowry mentioned, and what Brazil understands that that for sure poetry can mean so many things to so many different people. And so the goal is to attach yourself, if you will, to the emotion that you feel and let it, you know, flow, you know, just let that flow. And so if it makes you feel that longing you used to feel or that, you know, sadness or even, even maybe uh, a wholesome feeling of getting, um, you know, coming to terms with it or even you know whatever it might be uh it's for everyone to decide on their own you know it's very personal when you read poetry which is great to read it out but for those who read it themselves at home you know i hope you get uh different something different from it each time hopefully we'll stand by to read dennis lowry's comments but while your comments are fresh in my brain rochambeau just now you noted love is the ultimate goal love is the yeah. ultimate goal now that's like wisdom in proverbs macro but on a micro level as the author of this book and books and poems i'm i'm also reinforcing these are your thoughts as we sure. get to know you and interest sure. and intrigue in your art in general you know in right. addition to general art okay sure. from your perspective you're noting love is the ultimate goal yeah a little bit ago you noted like when in darkness another goal is to get out of the darkness right and when in darkness optimally ideal better than not is to have some clarity and i think you just said come to terms and embrace right. note take a good look at the darkness that's yeah. my characterization of some memories of what you've been saying going yes, back sir. to your book title i am the darkness is that applicable for me to reiterate some of your thoughts back to you yes absolutely 100 percent uh i think it's a it, it takes uh a lot of introspection and patience and time to look at one shadow right and everybody has one and and not run from it, you know, to, to learn, to tame it and to, you know, work with it and harness all the, the, the emotions, all the thoughts, all the power. There's no sense in, there's no sense in making an enemy out of the darkness, right? Because 
essentially in existence, it is at least 50%, right? It's 50% of existence. So there's no sense in making an enemy out of it because believe you me, it will surround you one day. And if you're fighting with it, you know, within yourself, uh, it's counterproductive. And so I always took the stance of whatever there is in front of me to, to, to address it head on. So that was the darkness at that time. And, um, and again, yes, the object is to, to deal with it and get out of it ultimately towards love, because in my opinion, and this is just my beliefs, that uh, what, what I call God, what I call the universe or the creator is love, like it is made of love, right? Isn't it is the embodiment of love and light and all things that are good and right. And in the darkness, there are elements of that. It's not devoid of God. The darkness isn't necessarily devoid of it, but it sure is hard to find when there's no, you know, when it's dark and, and you're sad. Uh, and so hence my poems of trying to urge pe nudge people along that keep crawling and you'll find your way out of here. Um, and so definitely to look at one shadow is the key. Uh, because to make an enemy out of it, you're just cutting yourself at the knees. Thank you so kindly for sharing. Inherently, you're sharing your thoughts and yeah, your poetry, and Absolutely. that helps us get clarity on you. It's like our sure. clarity about you is like double-edged, good, like a double-edged sword in a good way. We get to know what you think and how you think, and then we get introduced to a book that could be particularly helpful to us or anyone now, later, or otherwise. Rochambeau, okay. I'm going to repeat a statement and then a question from the dojo. Statement from Dennis Lowry, a quote, There is no greater sorrow than to recall our times of joy in wretchedness. A yeah. quote by Dante. Oh, dear. Yeah, and that's awesome. That's amazing quote right there. I love that. There is no greater sorrow than to recall our times of joy in wretchedness. There is no greater sorrow than to recall our times of joy in wretchedness. Wow, that's deep. That's um, real deep. I'm going to return back to that one yeah, uh, in my mind because really that's deep and so profound and fundamental and true. Mm -hmm. Question from Quattro Toro Rochambeau. Mm -hmm. How long was your journey? The subtitle of your book is A Journey Through Unspoken Thoughts. Quattro Toro is asking, how long was your journey? And when did you know when you were on the other side or coming out of the darkness? Oh, I love that. That's, that's the best question I've been asked in a very long time. So thank you, Quattro Toro. It was a long journey for me. Uh, unfortunately, I started my journey at a young age, um, you know, as a, as a preteen, you know, teen. You know, there's there's events that happen to all uh, over time, and as adults now, we can we can healed and mended and grew out of it and such. Uh, but of course, as a kid, that's you know, it started for me at about eleven, and probably didn't, you know grow out of it until you know late 20s i think so it was a good long portion of my life uh early life and then as i grew older um was able to write it down and to think about making it a book um a huge reason why i i wrote the book right and published it versus keeping it to myself was because of the 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 age I was at and the length of time it took to get out. So what a pertinent question. I was you know, young kid all the way through adulthood trying to find my way through the darkness. Again, my family was there for me. They were great, uh, loving parents and the whole nine. So nobody's fault, just the way that it was. And, and so, and totally out of it now, right? So things are great. In that time, I realized how many other kids are going through these things that they, that 
that hurt and are confusing. And so I felt like if they didn't have a voice and they feel like they're alone, then for sure they could benefit from at least understanding that, that a lot of people go through it or that they're not alone. And so that was a huge reason why I published my poems versus just keeping them private um, was for the kids, the, the teenagers that write poetry or that feel these feelings and, and really can't express them you know, to their classmates or their teachers parents um right and so or, you know there's significant others uh and so that was why i published it but yeah so for from about 11 till about you know 28 or so i would say that was my journey through the darkness through the shadows into the light the full journey the full stop and uh and then of course when you come out the other side you know there's a lot of healing to be done Right. So like the journey through the darkness was a certain period of time. What they don't tell you about leaving the darkness, however, is that once you get to the light, you have to have something to aim for. You have to have your morals back in check. You have to have, you know, your ego in check. You have to have because now you're operating with. With people. Who are not um, accustomed to to the culture that is the darkness, right? So the light, the darkness, they're two different things. And once you cross over to the light, uh, you know, your tastes change uh, and music and food and people, um, your habits change, right? So instead of doing things all day, you, you wanna do other things and go other places. And so I think that it took a lot of used to, a lot of getting used to getting out of the darkness because I got so used to it. I became it as a camouflage, but to then get out of it, I think that that was a new journey, um, which is totally learnable by everybody. You know, it's not, it's not a big deal. That's a great question. And then I think Brazil asked, she was thinking, uh, they were thinking the same thing. Do people actually, uh, leave darkness or just get used to it and embrace it. Exactly. A lot of people get used to it and they just stay in it because they're conditioned to believe that the day before, the day, and tomorrow are all the same, that they're never going to get out of the darkness. That's That's what keeps people in it. It's not so scary. It's not that there's things out to get you. It's that you lose the hope to get yourself out. And only you can save yourself. Nobody's coming to save you. Nobody thinks that, oh, this person's sad. Let me save them. Um, they don't see your heart. They just see with their eyes. They can't see with their heart what you're harboring in your heart. And so it's up to you to save yourself. And that's just sad to say. I mean, it's harsh to say, but it's true. And I think that people do leave the darkness um, behind and, and it happens. Um, and I think that those people can be a great uh, asset to to everybody, to folks that, that, that are still in it, because those who have made their way out can can help and traverse their way, can go back into it to help pull people out. Also, there's a lot of super positive people who just don't understand or, or can't understand what it's like to be there. And so as someone who made it out, I'd love to help explain that when applicable. But I think that very few people make it out of the darkness, uh, but it is possible um, just like success in life. You know, anybody can be successful. Not everybody is. You know, and so not everybody can get out of the darkness if they're in it, but uh, with enough strength, I mean, they can do it. It's possible or with hope, you know, and love. Rochambeau, E.R. Inahosa the third. DJ Hondo is back on mic here this episode 2416. The Outlaw Dojo is rocking and rolling. Big I see time. that you addressed some comments from Brazil and Quattro Toro was saying, thank you for sharing without the darkness. You truly cannot appreciate the beauty on the other side. So thank true. you, Quattro Toro on that note. Let's change. 
Ooh. Party light. No wonder my synergy was not synergizing. <laughs> Quattro Toro's party light timed out, but thank you, Quattro Toro. I'm going to say what you said again. Without the darkness, you truly cannot appreciate the beauty on the other side. And let's appreciate the beauty of your blue party light on the ceiling here in the studio. Dennis Lowry's noting a quote by Mark Twain, a.k.a. Samuel Clemens. I am an old man and have known a great many troubles, most of which never happened. Mark Twain. Oh, man, that's a great quote. That's fantastic. The that's man knows, a- his, knows his quotes, that's for sure. Those are some prime time, deep thinking. Oh, who, uh, Mark Twain is the one of the greatest uh, as far as like little axioms or little, you know, quips, little, you know, one liners that'll just knock you off your socks. Oh, man, you got to love Mark Twain. And let's not call the Outlaw Dojo the world's premier online Outlaw Dojo, because where can we get what we have right now? Intriguing for the one non-artist involved, me, Dennis Lowry, a song writer, is quoting authors, is right. quoting authors, right? So that's just, it's more fascinating for me, and I'll try to articulate it better I can. A non-artist, I sure know my songs. I sure know which Wayland song I think about or when I hear it, I think about something. Or when I think about something, I want to hear a particular song. So, see where I'm going with your Rochambeau? As a non-artist, we think of songs. I'm not saying like songwriters are exempt from that same thing. But as a songwriter, such as Dennis, such as right. you, Rochambeau, it's intriguing that on a different level of art, the songwriter thinks of authors' quotes and authors' passages where the yeah. lay person just thinks of a songwriter's song. Right, right. Oh, I totally understand where you, what you're saying there. And, I, you know, I agree with you. Uh, the songwriter, you know, is constantly trying not to, right, because comparison is the thief of joy or something like that, but comparing their art to other people's stuff. And then you have the ones that can't even be compared to, right, like the Mark Twain's, Right. Or the, you know, Dickinson or the Emerson or the right, whoever. And you just can't. Even, so you just you got to sit back and admire like how sweet it is that they're just like. You know, the Dead Poet Society, but their 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 quotes are still relevant today. And like, how could you reach how could I as an artist even attempt to climb that mountain to reach a pinnacle of. 50 years after my death, 100 years after my death, they're going to say, Rochambeau said this, you know, and it's like, man, if you could even reach, you know, a year after your death, someone remembers you, you know, that's great. But so, yeah, I think artists do compare themselves or not compare, but appreciate the magnitude that it takes to become world famous like Mark Twain from a writer's perspective. I mean, from being in your room writing your heart out to having someone around the world know what you wrote is an honor i mean there's just no way around it it's just an honor for songwriters and for artists you know i think and i'll just mention this real quickly uh that i am the darkness is uh one book the first book in a trilogy that was you know the books were published separately over time uh but it is a trilogy altogether and just you know, being satire, satirical, I named it uh, The Diary of a Madman um, because, you know, a guy writing dark poetry, you know, and publishing it has to be off his rocker. And so, you know, and I can't confirm or deny here. Uh, if I am or not, we'll save that for another day. Uh, but there is, my point is, is that Mind the Darkness isn't just leading you into the darkness. That's my point. The other two books are lord of the shadows and then in the silence of paradise so there is a goal to go through the darkness through the world of shadows into the light you know and i'll just leave it at that and those other books we can explore at another time or on your own time 
but I Am the Darkness was my baby and my brainchild and my favorite. Um, you know, don't tell the other books that, but it was my favorite. And, uh, and so that's why we're here t- specifically talking about that, because that's where it all started. Well, you had me at Trilogy. So even if you right. just repeat the names of the, of the additional books, would you mind map out where you've already been, where you're going? Therefore, we could go with respect to that nice word, Trilogy. All right. Awesome. Correct. So absolutely. As we know, the first one, I am the darkness. What I meant by that was I am the sacred darkness. There's nothing inherently terrible about being the darkness. It's just a state of being. So if you added, I am the sacred darkness, oh, that takes the edge off of the darkness. It's sacred. It's good. Okay. I'm the sacred darkness with the intent to walk towards love, towards the light. So I kind of viewed that journey as, well, what's, before you get to the light, you kind of get to this land of shadows, right? Where the darkness meets the light. There's this, uh, you know, you're starting to learn to trust again. You're starting to learn to love again. You're getting your emotions back. You're, you're, you know, so, but you're not on your feet yet. It's a little confusing. So I named that book, Lord of the Shadows. And so the second book is called Lord of the Shadows. And that one is more, uh, less, less po- poetry, more songs, still very poetic, but, but more in a song atmosphere, meaning there's, there's, there's hooks and there's, you know, uh, outros and intros and choruses and, you know, and then a verse and then another chorus and a second verse. And so that one kind of, you know, for better or worse, came out like that. And uh, and then the, and so walking through that, the land of the shadows, Lord of the shadows, uh, the goal is to get to paradise. If you're coming out of darkness, you want to get to paradise. What I noticed when I came out of darkness and back to Brazil and to Quadra Toro's questions, you know, can you leave the darkness? What's it like once you leave? Um, a lot of people don't tell you, right? Everyone tries to, the self-help folks, the, the meditators and the, you know, whatever crystals and all things that they, they want you to feel good. But once you feel good, there's still that void of, of not feeling bad. And you have to reconcile. You have to have a goal. When you get to the light, you have to have a goal to walk to. And I didn't, the best way I could convey that in a title was in the silence of paradise because sure you made it out of darkness you walked through the land of the shadows you conquered that you're lord of the shadows and now you're in paradise you finally made it boy it's awfully quiet it's awfully lonely at the top it's awfully awkward and unfamiliar if what you're accustomed to is pain even paradise can seem lonely at the beginning you know, and, and you certainly work through that. And I think that, you know, lots of people can under, can understand that for their various reasons, right? Like a, a nurse that gets off of a really tough shift, you know, might need some time alone because even though they're back at home, right, they're still in this silence, right? They're, they're, it's, it's this, this painful, you know, recollection of what you've come through. And so... I wrote the third, the, the third one in the trilogy is, is that, that goal, that aim. Look, you made it out of the darkness. Don't stop now. You got to keep going. You got to have a North Star because if you stop now, you're just going to revert back to the old ways. I mean, that's just the way it goes. And so hence the trilogy to walk you out of it, to make sure that you're good, and then to let you know, even when you make it to paradise, if it feels kind of wonky and it feels kind of messed up, that's good because at least you got your feelings back because you know, at least you're feeling something again. And that's, that's, that's the healing. That's the plus. That's the plus. That's the healing. That's the journey. Journey, Correct. The journey is composed via a trilogy. You put the journey into a trilogy. Exactly. Thanks for reinforcing, clarifying and mapping out the trilogy 
-hmm. aka journey start your journey at amazon.com where i am the darkness the first book in the trilogy of books by author er enahosa the third is available the link is in the description of this episode that'll take you right to the specific applicable page at amazon.com for book one of the of the trilogy book one's called i am the darkness author er enahosa it has been my favorite episode to team up like this remote two locations you're texas i'm washington but here we are is one we picked up where we left off from a previous episode showcasing your art in this case poems and then we mapped out where we can go and or where one can go as we move forward i am super pleased nonetheless would you please close us out as we transition from your book, I Am the Darkness, into just staying together and transitioning to our next segment, nonetheless. Thank you for showcasing and continuing to showcase this episode, more poems from your book, I Am the Darkness. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been you know an honor to come on here and to share my humble thoughts and point of view um you know it's it's the goal just like ron chant said of every songwriter to hear their songs on the radio i love when he says that um it's the goal of every you know poet to to be heard and understood and it's just that longing so this this place really does my heart a lot of good this time with you here and explaining with the chat and talking so thank you for that uh Absolutely, the trilogy is there for everyone to walk through the journey that I set out that way is the trilogy. Um, you know, and one thing about that is that the books can be read independently, right? If you get the second book and you only have the second book, you're not necessarily, you're missing some of the poems, sure, but the poems that you do read are intact and uh, applicable to the book's um, direction and mode in of itself. So, it, you know, just to understand that, that each book is independent along as the trilogy as well. Um, I, you know, I think that uh, it's the goal of everybody, of every poet to be heard. And you guys are hearing me, so I really appreciate it uh, being here tonight. Appreciate you, Rochambeau. Appreciate the Outlaw Dojo. Quattro Toro has a follow-up question. I'm going to have you read that, Rochambeau, knowing that you and I are going to stay together. We're talking right. journeys. Steps are elements of a journey. A trilogy of books equals a journey when the author, you, mapped it out that way. A song called 12 Steps is a journey, could be a journey. We'll oh, let yeah. the author slash songwriter musician share his thoughts on what kind of journey it is. Right. Like I know ahead of time what steps the 12 steps is referring to. <laughs> right. My interpretation is that's a journey by definition. Nonetheless, right. for those people yeah. about ready to hear this song for the first time, I'm just going to give the name away. And similar to Quattro Toro, Dennis, Brazil, and, it, and forevermore, I just won't name everybody who's saying it, but we're all saying it and we're all appreciating it. Songs, art, poems are open to interpretation that often and very easily can have a different interpretation via the receiver, listener, reader, different interpretation than the author, artist, songwriter. So Correct. be it, right? So be it. That's just part so of the be beautifulness. It. So no big deal. We're just calling it out. Rochambeau, please stay right there if agreeable. And if agreeable, take a look at Quattro Toro's question. So we follow up with that right after we do a little bit of history. We knew E.R. Inahosa Rochambeau was going to be here for this episode, but we only get together once a week every Wednesday. So be it. A few days ago, like two and a half, three days ago, a video, a song video was posted on youtube.com i'm gonna i'm gonna switch here without too much more talk and just show the video that is getting all kinds of hits all kinds of attention by our very own friend 
by our very own artist, our own as in our friend, right? Dennis Lowry is an independent artist currently in the state of Georgia. Outlaw Country Radio showcases a lot of music written and performed by Dennis Lowry. The Outlaw Dojo, what we're doing right now, we showcase a lot of music by Dennis Lowry. Inherently, Dennis has his own YouTube channel and Spotify and Pandora, Google uh, Music. They all showcase music by Dennis Lowry. But it was just impossible not to note and appreciate and go, whoa, as of a few days ago, what we're about ready to show, a new video posted by Dennis to his YouTube channel, the audio video called 12 Steps is gaining momentum and per right because perfect that we are just here together to showcase this yeah. here comes for sure 12 steps the recently posted youtube.com audio video of 12 steps rochambeau and the outlaw dojo proper at large Appreciate your feedback as we showcase 12 Steps by Dennis Lowry. I wash my hands in muddy water. I drown my sins away with a bottle of booze. And I smoke my reefer in the morning. So later on, I don't get the blue. With my thumb, I walk down the highway, just killing time, smoking cigarettes. Staring out the window Out of the darkness I'm daydreaming I've got my regrets Twelve steps forward But I fell back I can't help myself She ain't coming back Nobody called Jesus And he won't answer When the night is over, when the sun starts shining, then an empty bottle takes me to you. Twelve steps forward, but I fell back. I can't help myself, but she ain't coming back. No, but I called Jesus, and he won't answer. Wash my hands in muddy water. I drown my sins away with a bottle of booze. That's a three day old video. That's an incredible video with an incredible audio. Shout out Great. to. While I was listening, I was looking up, I'm on YouTube.com on Dennis's channel, where Dennis cites mixing engineer Jeremy Moore, a.k.a. 
Chief Tincture Time. Nice. That song, written, that song, 12 Steps, written and performed by Dennis Lowry, the digital editing by Dennis Lowry, the mixing engineer, Tincture Time, a.k.a. Jeremy Moore. And then one can go to Dennis Lowry's YouTube page to get any more information about the artists and such. But shout out to our very own Tincture Time, who was the mixing engineer for that song. Shout out to... Big our Shambo. timing, Rochambeau, that you came on to recite and showcase more of your poetry on the same week that that song got released. And here we are, kind of two birds and stoned, able to appreciate <laughs> that song and that video. We'll stand by for the dojo. But if agreeable, Rochambeau, the floor is yours on any thoughts of fellow dojo member Dennis Lowry's song, 12 Steps. Awesome. I'm going to address that. And then after I address that, uh, Dennis just made a comment that I want you to look at, you know, here just in a second, because that, that's awesome. Um, I think that the public knows what they want. I think the public are no dummies. I think the public knows quality video, like sweet on sweet, what would you call it? Like AI morphing technology, like futuristic video format on youtube especially is like the prominent platform that you can you can see a lot of this work this artwork and i think that having an engineer but it also having uh, dennis's voice and the right microphone and the right instruments that quality of recording mixed with that cool new quality of artwork uh is gonna is definitely gonna gonna max out the views i think you know people want quality and in the in, in the industry the music industry they they get it they get the quality but sometimes it's it's reduced because of who knows why right the music industry and I, i'm not an expert the, the beauty of of the independent artist like dennis lowry he can stay true to his form and use his voice and his you know attributes and then once it's mixed up oh man it sounds great even better than than some other you know perfect also additionally professional grade music so i think that absolutely i didn't i was unaware that it was blowing up right until you said but i can see now after watching that video and hearing the song and so uh Spoiler alert, I had heard the song before, but I, you know, so I had that honor to hear the song before. Hearing it with the video, oh man, I can see it absolutely. And again, we don't want to beat that dead horse because Dennis may not want us to talk about the, the amount of clicks it's getting. But in a, in a society, on a platform where clicks are, you know, good, right? They're the nature of, of the game. Um, I think he nailed it with this one. You know, that, that video is super cool. The song is great. The analogies he uses, you know, I was going 12 steps forward and then I fell back, you know, and I mean, again, back to what we've been saying this whole time, uh, applicable to him in the way he wrote it, but applicable to me in the way that I interpret it and, you know, and applicable to you in a different way and it just moves on that way. And that's where the magic is when you can get everybody to feel, you know, what you're feeling in their own terms. Oh man, I think that's great. And that song definitely hooks you into feeling, man, you go forward and you go back, you know, it's that real, I mean, tragedy of, of life, you know, there's that word tragedy. Yeah. From Brazil to poems, Right. To songs, to journeys, right. 12 steps, journey, tragedy, darkness. darkness. He, he, he mentioned the darkness. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, we go not only just reinforcing there's a market for it, right? Like even if there wasn't, that's what he was feeling at the time and, and wrote it down to be true to himself. And, and so, yeah, lo and behold, there's a market for it. Right. But the fact that he felt it and that you felt it and that I felt it. Of course there's a market for it because we're all feeling the same set of emotions at different times. Uh, but the key is, 
you know, and, and it's easy, it might be easier for me to say, but, you know, for the artist who's capable of painting, paint because others cannot. For the artist who's capable of writing, please write because others cannot. And so to have that talent as a songwriter uh, and stay true to what he's, you know, the darkness, if that's what you're feeling, of course I love it. You know that I love it because that's where I'm at. But uh, others are going to find common ground in that kind of sentiment. Whether you believe it or not, there's more people out there that are going to love music that's real mm -hmm. than a polished song that was written by five different people that makes no sense, that has no heart and soul, uh, but it's catchy. Well, th that's all good and well, but as I said, the people are no dummies. They want quality and they want realness, and I think that's what this one provides. I do too, Rochambeau. Painters paint, writers write, coyotes howl. Right. And it's self-fulfilling, not because I do it, but it's just because I believe it. So I feel like I stick to my guns. A right. painter painting is how that person howls, howls at the moon. Right. A coyote right. howls at the moon. A songwriter writes, a guitarist plays guitar. A mixing engineer head. mixes. A poet right. writes poems. Right. That's how they howl at the moon. That's how that's their coyote howl. That's their coyote howl. Yeah. I'm going to turn it over to you, Rochambeau, so I don't get into the other kind of darkness by the outlaw universe <laughs> because I have not yet debuted that song on Stone Jack okay. O'Clock on Outlaw.fm. I got 30 seconds, and maybe I'll say it better later. If that was somebody's first chance of seeing 12 Steps, now you know. If that was your first time seeing that video, it probably was because that video just came out. That particular version of the song has been mixed by Jeremy Moore. You might have heard the song before. I don't know what you don't know, and I know that you know what I don't know, etc. So one way or the other, there's a link to that song in the description of this episode that will take one to YouTube.com to that same audio video to get introduced to it and go from there to to varying degrees people are going to be familiar with the different applications of the term 12 steps right, um, right. but like it's not like it's a giveaway we're not like sharing the secret behind the day the music died cool. in the sense that 12 steps has an applicable reality for a lot of people directly or yeah. indirectly through other loved ones and family members who engage in the 12 steps in an addiction, treatment, solution, setting. And the 12 steps program has a biblical foundation. I'll just right. leave it at that because it's, it's, again, I'm not trying to overdo it like we're giving away the secret to the song the into, day the music into, died but we're also mapping point, out the biblical agreed how, how cool is it too that that the artist i.e dennis here is able to talk about a subject right that's so taboo so difficult to bring up amongst family members amongst friends or spouses right co-workers to tell your co-workers about 12 steps or your boss you know it's a daunting subject to think about talking about or intervening with or whatever but how easy is it to listen to a good song about such a really heavy taboo subject like one's really heavy but it's really easy to listen to that in a song format and i think that's the gift that the the the, the magic that the power that musicians or, or artists have they're able to kind of get to the root of certain subjects that are real heavy, make it a song, right? And in a good way, not like to diminish it, to, to bring it up, to lift it up to like a song. And then where everyone can say, yeah, we need to talk about that, you know, um, whereas before it might not have been. So like, you know, again, kudos to Dennis for, for talking about cool stuff, whatever he wants to talk about. But we all must admit it's a heavy subject that he made into a really cool, catchy song, which is wonderful in the limelight of we can all talk about 
heavy subjects because we're all adults and we're all capable and and so the artist kind of brings those things to light right brings the darkness to the light like he was doing and we see the synergy when with respect to heavy subjects 100 percent. this book your book i'm the darkness is the epitome of a heavy subject but you explore it via your poems and your poetry i in the darkness and we see how dennis is tying together right. the theme of this episode yes, your book sir. i am the darkness a journey 100%. through unspoken thoughts trilogy no doubt but darkness at present correct clarity in the darkness getting out of the darkness right. aspiring to get out of the darkness but i fell back back 100%, into the exactly part of that journey is you fell back, you know, anybody that's been in the darkness, you fe- you've fallen back more times than you can count. And uh, so that's a very notable, notatable uh, subject matter from the artist, because if they're being honest with themselves, of course, they've fallen back, right? And so of course, they're going to write about it. And uh, again, not everybody can write. So when the artist, so like, how many people fall back? Everybody. How many people write about it? Not everybody, right? Very few. And then out of those, how many are like good, right? Like that we, we would listen to or that we want to listen to. And then once you have that, everybody can reach out and resonate with something like that. Like, wow, the, that song is exactly how I felt at that time in my life or whatever, you know, and that's golden right there. And when I didn't have a song, there might have been a poem that exactly captured it, helped right. me, gave me clarity, helped me exactly. in, helped me out, helped me on exactly. the way out. Art captures it. Prophets capture it. Bible verses capture it. For sure capture darkness and light, you know. The John 3.14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. John 314 as quoted and posted by Dennis Lowry in the outlaw dojo full circle. Dennis noted his song. This song 12 steps is three minutes and 14 seconds. A synergy hidden gem. Yeah. To John three fourteen, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Man. Death, darkness, Bible, 314, yeah. 12 steps to each their own to interpret the journey that is 12 steps, period. I'll leave it at that. I am the darkness. What a incredible intersection of synergy this episode 2416 is quattro toro noted you mentioned your journey goes back to young childhood when did you start to put thoughts on paper was it just a stream of conscious to start question what a wonderful question um you know so i appreciate that um i first started to put pen to paper probably around 12 or 13 it was you know very rudimentary you know the roses are red violets are blue but maybe not about roses and violets but very rudimentary always started with rhyme for whatever reason i I picked up on the rhyme aspect because i know prose and poetry can come without rhyming i just have always picked that that mode um and and so wrote uh Poems, always poems. So it didn't start with like stories or prose or like a novel or anything. So always poems, about 13, we'll say, 13. Very rudimentary, you know, God, good good God knows what a uh, 13-year-old boy is thinking, right? So what, whoever I was thinking it was, it was up to no good, I'm sure. And so wrote that down and... Um, didn't make it into the book you know into any of the books it was just practice but definitely still have them which is a cool you know a cool thing to note i've kept everything i wrote ever since i started writing so in a sense i always knew i mean not always but in a sense i i 
I had the pull, the know-how, the direction to keep everything I wrote because it was documentation. I knew I was on a journey I wanted to document, even even from the get-go. I knew I was in a journey that I wanted to document. So about 13, I started writing. About 15 and 16, I started to write like actual poems that weren't just like, like in a journal, you kind of journal things and you free write and whatever. So I kind of made some rhymes that were just independent. Then at maybe 15 and 16, I started writing poems like, okay, this, ti- this has a title, like My Ocean. And I'm going to specifically talk about diving into my emotions or, you know, something like that. So there's a title, it's specific, there's, a, you know, I'm going to write so many lines and then it's going to be done and that's the poem. I was about 15 or 16 starting to do that and did that for many years. And then just to tie up, to finish the question, I didn't think about publishing my poems at all until, you know, almost recently, until about, you know, two years ago, I really started working on the trilogy and then got it out about a year ago. And then the the book number two and three, you know, a couple months later, uh, so it's relatively new that the books have been published. So just thought I'd tie that up. But started writing at 13, honed my skills at 16. From 16 to 40, have been trying to hone my skills. And then at 40, I published the books. And, and it's been about a year since then. There's a link to the YouTube.com video audio that is 12 Steps, the one we just played on this episode. Check out the description of this mm-hmm episode there's also a link to the amazon.com specific page for i am the darkness by rochambeau so now we all know where we can go to see the links to move forward in our journey of these two particular showcases thank you dennis over and out we look forward to having you back for an episode where we showcase more of your background history past present and future Thank you, Quattro Toro, for staying here the whole time. And mm-hmm. and thank you, Rochambeau, for circling back to Quattro Toro's question, which was quite a bit ago. But if what she's content question. content with that, I am as well. Um, Rochambeau, does break time sound agreeable? Yes, sir. Sure does. Go get some evening air and a drink, a cold drink, and meet you back here accordingly. The following chief names have been registered at StoneJacks.com since last Wednesday. Chief Pheromone Chamber. So these chief names wind up on apparel like t-shirts. And I jumped right into the first chief name that got registered probably about midnight last Wednesday. Chief Pheromone Chamber. Chief Way too busy being empathetic. Chief Royal Pillow Fight. Chief Waylon Wings. Chief Bright Sunny Day with a Touch of Buzz. Chief Galaxy Blaster. Like DJ Rock and Robin and I noted last episode, in general, we don't call out the human who registers a particular chief name but I will disclose that state of Georgia outlaw country artist Dennis Lowry registered chief galaxy blaster chief complexicated chief complexicated it's a hilarious chief blu-ray vision chief major napper Chief Muddled Energy. This next one's kind of harsh. Chief Stupor of Suck. Chief Multi Dexterous. AKA Chief Not Uni, Not Uni, Not Ambi, but Multi Dexterous. Those are the chief names registered at stonejacks.com since last Wednesday. They go on the chief name manifest. It took me 2400 episodes to realize why don't I just read the chief names right from stonejacks.com 
from the chief name manifest so that's what i've been doing lately shout out to all the chief names that have been registered since last wednesday dj hondo here thanking you kindly for tuning in to stone jacks o'clock live broadcast wednesdays simultaneously dj hondo is on the hearing is fun youtube live channel with chief rochambeau aka author er inahosa the third where we're talking about one of his books i am the darkness but before i go any further it's time to say congratulations coach t you are the stone jacks o'clock athletic coach of the week Coach T is the head basketball coach for the Camas High School girls basketball team in Camas, Washington. Congratulations, Coach Thompson. You are the Stone Jacks O'Clock Athletic Coach of the Week. Someday soon, DJ Hondo will get Coach Thompson to enter the dojo that is the Outlaw Studio upstairs at Washougal Times for a Stone Jacks O'Clock episode alongside a Hearing is Fun Outlaw Dojo episode. Nonetheless, the ball is in your court, Coach T. Congratulations. You are the Stone Jacks O'Clock athletic coach of the week rochambeau how goes it oh it goes mighty fine it's been a, a great show i think we've really hit the nail on the head with full circle uh artistry and um patrons of artistry that comes from a, a place of darkness but that ultimately leads to love and understanding so i think we really crossed some bridges here today Bridges crossed without a bridge too far, right. which we call right. that the sweet spot. Did you reflect or think about any thoughts, reinforcements, or additional things that you would like to share or we all would appreciate knowing as a dojo regarding you as an author and your book, I Am the Darkness? Absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, it's been a real pleasure to come on here and to share a few of my thoughts and poems with the dojo um i think that no matter what everybody has uh you know a hobby or something that they really enjoy to do and i think you know my final message in this broadcast is to no matter what it is you know explore that follow your your heart follow your dreams as cheesy as it is to say and to hear uh because in this day and age everybody has something to share right and so if you're sh if you have a story and you have you know feelings about it and certain lessons you've learned share those feelings share those lessons other people need to hear them want to hear them whether it's poems or music or art uh, or axe throwing or any kind of cool stuff uh it's you know stay to your path uh because it gets you know better it gets better Words of wisdom, words of encouragement, words of clarity from E.R. Inahosa. So in tune with darkness, harsh times, psychologically harsh times, that you were willing and able to write a trilogy of books on the topic in the world of darkness. So we value your sentiments and we look forward to learning more about you as well as more of your poetry, knowing now we know what we know, where we can go to get our own copy of I Am The Darkness. It's so interesting that you asked that because I usually, and, and for, for the poems in this book, um, I would typically write the poem because I have to think about this. I want to be honest. I generally write the poem and, and no matter how, if it's long or short, 
with right away within the first few lines, there's a catchy catch that I find interesting. And then I'll name the poem that and kind of continue on. So it is early in the poem that I find the name and then I go on with it. And that's simply to find a theme, like if it's an ocean, desert, you just kind of go with descriptive words to match that. Recently, I've been working on a future endeavor, a future book. And I actually started with the title and filled in the poem accordingly, right? I had the subject, the direction. That proved to be a really cool challenge. For me, it was like a cool challenge, something different, and uh, was like just an interesting point of view to, to change the way I write or like uh, just to sharpen my skills. So I find it more difficult to write the title and then the poem versus the poem and then that title. So I think that's what you're asking, and that's awesome. It's it's been really interesting and fun to talk about, uh, you know, poetry to an audience, right, or to to the chat, to Hondo, because it's been so private, such a private part of my life. Um, and I think that's the case probably for most poets, for most songwriters, for most would-be artists. You know, maybe you show a significant other or two, but maybe even some of your best friends don't even know. You know, and if that's the case for anybody that's watching or that hears this, you know, shine your light, like do it anyways, even if nobody knows, because, you know, ultimately it's you. And then one day someone will find out about it. And it's like, that's the equivalent of what you did when no one was looking like that's your character. You know, that's what it. And so when someone says, oh, look at all this that you've done and nobody was looking, uh, then that gives credence to your art, your, your character, your journey. And so just, just do that, you know, do you no matter what, because one day someone will see you and be like, wow, versus you not doing anything because no one's around. And then when someone does come around, you've done nothing, you know, so just take that and try to figure that, you know, in your life. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Just do you and whatever art you have, if it's, you know, writing or reading or something outside, just do that to the best of your abilities. Because I guarantee down the line, someone will recognize you for it and it'll be all the sweeter. You know, and agreed. I, I think that, uh, Mo yeah. Sharing your, your emotion with people is totally nerve wracking and different, uh, but, but cathartic and great at the same time. And the reaching people makes it worth it. Like I just heard a, um, I heard a saying and I forgot where I heard it, but it was like, we, we, we only ascend by rising, by lifting up other people or something like that. So like we ourselves only come up by helping others come up. And so it is raw as it is, it's like, it's totally worth it. If, uh, if others can find, you know, some kind of uh, encouragement in, in, in seeing that, hey, if I can show that I was in pain or whatever, then, then they can too, or, or not necessarily show it, but just feel it and then live through it. And like I say, nobody tells you about the light. Yeah, they tell you to like, oh, the darkness is bad, come out of the darkness. But they don't ever tell you what to do once you get to the light. And the main thing is to have a goal, you know, whatever that goal is, just stick to that goal. Because, you know, it's so unfamiliar, the light's going to be so unfamiliar, it's going to it's going to blind you a bit. And that's good. That's okay. Just run with that too, you know. Yeah, so just the chat's going in. It's super cool to notate 
Uh, some folks aren't into reading as much and they're being honest about it, which is great because I too am not an avid reader or anything like that. And, and not trying to promote like my, my stuff or anything, but poetry, the beauty is it, it reads unlike a novel. It's not like a book or a novel or like a religious text where it's like really hard reading, you know, poetry is cool in the fact that it's not lighthearted, but it's, it's, you know, it's a couple of stanzas, it rhymes, it bounces, it bounces, it bounces, and it's done, you know, and it's kind of real. You can read through 10 of them and be like, okay, that was easy, you know, uh, versus like chapters in a novel Moby Dick, you know, you can't read 10 chapters in a row and there's just no way, you know, so. Not to put things in the box, especially if it's just too soon and I'm too distant, but we, we see that like YouTube shorts, social media posts that are short under 30 seconds under 60 seconds appear to be the wave of the future and people's attention spans are geared towards what we call a short 30 or 60 seconds is there a little bit of a connective tissue between that and poetry poems versus novels yes yes very you know connective tissue it's like it's like the exactly it's like the instagram or tiktok to the like email or memo you know so like the email is this long format and that's like a novel a poem is very much like a TikTok or a youtube short it's just very short and generally right generally pretty short pretty light and they rhyme and so you can read you know you can get into it uh but i you know i was never a huge reader uh avid reader either um and that's just, you know, that's the way life goes. Uh, find what you like. If you don't like reading, there's audio books or there's something else, you know. Um, but or there's just other modes, right? Like there's sports or there's other, you know, there's math or there's other things you could do besides reading entirely. And so do that if that's what suits you. Um, you know, because ultimately it's about getting good at something you can do for a long time and love and then you'll be happy. You know, if you can do something that you're good at, that you love. Uh, Expertise yeah. and passion. Good, yeah, good, you good go. at equals expertise. Love equals passion. Another self-fulfilling prophecy, but it fits that model. Find the intersection of something you're good at and something you love. Find the intersection of your expertise and your passion. Okay, Rochambeau, do you see that pheromone chamber I do. Uh, no. Is that what that is? Okay. Oh. Uh, I, I thought that's what it was, but I just wasn't sure. Dang. That... It's like the after hours extra director's cut version. Speaking of shorts, meaning some of these dojos are an hour long, some are 20 minutes long. You know, some of the final edited versions of the dojos are an hour, some are 20 minutes. Right. We noted that. YouTube shorts and Instagram and TikTok videos are eight seconds, 12 seconds, etc. Yeah. meaning a lot less time than 20 minutes or an hour and 20 minutes. All that to say, I can't wait to grab the, the perhaps three seconds of video that is me noting pheromone chamber, then you leaning in and saying something along the lines of, is that what that is? <laughs> duly noted i uh i knew what it was duly noted i knew what it was i was just playing the, the field is that what it is how about this for satire your barbecue ain't lit enough without stone jacks the real old days there is the red version of a Stone Jacks baller red t-shirt with some koozies from Robert Henry and the repeaters and outlaw country with mama tried Rochambeau you close us out yeah. right on so we had all kinds of showcase from Dennis Lowry to I am the darkness which is on Amazon and all the above, Stone Jacks, O'Clock, and Outlaw Country was here, and we came and went, and 
be here or be square next time. Otherwise, catch us on the replay.